Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a very patriotic O-Knife giveaway, the Acaso Knives Solstice, and my most carried knives of June 2023. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week, uh, they were both from my full collection video, Modern Folders Part 1. Uh, and uh, this first one is from Poncho151. He says, I'm so glad you're doing this, Bob. I don't watch many quote unquote full collection videos these days, but you had me at full because I know from years and years of watching, this isn't an average collection. And boy, we are off to a good start. Well, to you, Poncho, I say thank you very much. And also thank you for being patient and waiting around for this. I, I do appreciate it. And I'm glad people are liking this. Uh, it's cathartic to get it all out there. And I'm only one part in. Uh, Hero Sticks, good friend of the show, says, great part one. Been hopeful for this series since I subscribed and became a gentleman junkie. Carry on, he says. Well, he raises an interesting point. You might want to subscribe if you're here and you like, and you like knife content. Subscribe. Uh, but also... You can be a gentleman junkie by going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and checking out the different levels of support. Uh, but we'll get into that a little later. First, uh, having said everything there, I think it's time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket, a knife that does not get enough attention uh, is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Uh, this one was um, modified by Mike Emler, Crazy Sharp. He's got a great channel, by the way. You need to check him out. But he's also an excellent sharpener of knives. Uh, he learned that great skill uh, in Japan. He lived in Japan for a long time. And uh, I believe it was Okinawa. Um, and he was stationed there. He's also a martial artist, big dude, and uh, really knows how to sharpen a knife with a stone. He's got a very interesting technique that he um, he outlines in the uh, interview we did with him uh, quite a while ago at this point. Uh, but I had him take the sort of boring blade of the Spidey Chef. I know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say boring, but the unpointy blade and make it pointy. I saw a video of a fisherman uh, in, who was uh, very um, courageously sea kayaking, caught some giant fish uh, and, and pulled out his spidey chef and had a nice tip, uh, a modified blade, and he, he gutted it. And I thought, that's what I want. Uh, so that's what I was carrying. Uh, one that, like I said, I don't carry often. Love the snail trails, by the way. Don't carry often, but um, recently refreshed the edge with a 600 grit Spyderco stone. And it is, mm, it's crackling. Very, very nice. Okay, next up in my pocket uh, slip joint today was the, I'll do it by the mic so you can hear the walk and talk. That's closed. That's open. The Jack Wolf Knives Venom Jack. Um, I'm going to really fight hard uh, the instinct to say one of my favorite Jack Wolf Knives because they're all awesome. I love them all. But I do have to say that the Swayback Jack with the Warren Cliff this style of knife is one of my all-time favorites. Therefore, that does legitimately make this one of my favorite Jack Wolf knives. But uh, as you know, if you have any history with this channel, uh, whenever I have a Jack Wolf knives knife in my hand, that's my favorite because they're all awesome. Um, but this one, I just keep coming back to. Uh, all things said and done, the the his version of the Viper, I think that's why he calls it the Venom Jack. Uh, is the one I keep coming back to. Viper is the number 47 GEC, and uh, that's sort of the nickname it got. So Venom Jack is very fitting. Okay. Uh, uh, on my waist, in my waistband, right up front in the appendix uh, position was this Tops Knives Felony Stop, designed by Lacey Zabo, uh, former Marine uh, and law enforcement officer, martial artist designs these very cool tactical style knives 
for self-defense and combat and that kind of thing. And uh, But this one is one of my favorite designs. It's audacious. It's a dagger sort of fighter, definitely. A big finger choil with really nice jimping. And when I saw this, uh, first time I saw this, I was hot and heavy in the Filipino martial arts. And I saw a reverse grip trapping, um, what do you want to call that? Scoop. So in other words, in reverse grip, there's a lot of, uh, in Filipino martial arts, uh, there's a lot of trapping of the other person's appendage, like arm, um, with the blade against your own hand and arm. And this, this like serrated scoop there, or jimped scoop, just seemed perfect for that. Of course, totally esoteric. Uh, the chances of you pulling that off are, 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 I don't know what they are, but I don't think they're good. Uh, but it's still there for your thumb. And uh, great, great pistol grip orients that blade in such a way that if you're, if you're punching it, if you're thrusting, you don't have to reorient your grip much to get that point where you want it to go. So really love this felony stop. A great, great knife. Um, <clears throat> but that's tops. Always doing great stuff. All right, next up and last for emotional support, the quill. I love the quill from Wingard Wearables. Uh, uh, after I recently spoke with Zach, oh, he's been on the show a number of times and I uh, always love talking to him. He's a wealth of knowledge about weapons, about history and the history of weapons and the reasons behind them and all of that. Um, he designed such cool stuff. This was actually designed, conceived of by his wife and uh, refined by him, the quill. This is the original. There's a smaller one and a larger one. And uh, this I recently jute wrapped and it has taken this to the next level. I, 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 it really fills out the hand for the different grips you might use this thing for, and I also think it looks good on there. Um, so that's what I had in my pockets today and in my waistband. What were you carrying? Please let me know. Drop it down below. I always love hearing about what you all are carrying because well, it gives me ideas. Also lets me know that I've got a, a classy group of, uh, of audience out there, and um, yeah, I just like, I'm a snoop. What can I say? Like J.J. Giddis. All right, next up, I want to talk about our July 6th giveaway. At July 6th, Thursday night knives, tomorrow night. Uh, by the way, happy 4th of July. I forgot to mention it up front. Uh, happy Independence Day. Be grateful you live in the United States if you do. Um, and, uh, and do all you can to help preserve her, for she is a fine nation. Um, and I say that without any irony. I, am, I, I mean it to the core of my being. And uh, <clears throat> in honor of 4th of July and summer in the United States, we're giving this away. Uh, this is was given to the channel by uh, O-Knife. We did a little video on it, and now we're giving it away. O-Knife O-Light. O-Knife is on of O-Light, an awesome light company. By the way, uh, they sent me this recently, and uh, this I am keeping, this Arkfeld, and I am figuring it out. I'm really soaking it up, and I can't wait to review it. It'll be my first light review. Very excited. But anyway, uh, O-Knife gave us this package here. So it's an EDC um, organizer, pocket organizer here. On the back, it's got pockets. On the front, it's got pockets and this cool Velcro so you can put all sorts of little um, patches and stuff on there. Uh, but also in it, you may have noticed there is a light, uh, the i5T, um, right? Uh, O-Light here. And it's beautifully an anodized with old glory proudly emblazoned in the um, aluminum there. And you've got a pocket clip and also a hat clip. So this fits on the bill of your hat and becomes a uh, um, headlamp in a pinch. Love that feature on flashlights. Um, and then this beautiful blade. This is the O-Knife Rubato 2. And it's got a 154 cm uh, blade, sheep's foot blade. Beautiful with a very, very gentle... Uh, belly there and an excellently thin grind just a very nice slicer i carried this one day and did not mar the clip that's always the big danger of carrying a knife that's not yours but i wanted to check it out you know i wanted to make sure i wasn't giving away faulty faulty uh goods and let me tell you this thing is fidget heaven uh these guys at o knife i'm not sure who who oems their knives but they have that axis lock that bar lock uh, really locked in 
and it's very comfortable, uh, very fidgety and fun to use and has a great sound. Let's see if that translates. You know, I don't know, kind of uh, aluminum knives have, have a, a nice sound in general, I find. Anyway, uh, July 6th. 2023. Join us at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, and we will be giving this away to anyone who can type hashtag knife in the comment section. It's pretty easy, so join us then. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at four new exciting knives on release now or very shortly, right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So new from K-Bar and uh, co-author of The Joy of Cooking and outdoor expert and knife extraordinaire Ethan Becker is the BK-41. What is the BK-41, you say? There are so many BKs in that K-Bar lineup of Ethan Becker design knives. Well, rightly so, because they are amazing knives. I used to have one a long time ago, pardon me, and gave it to a great guy, neighbor in New York. He needed it more than I. Uh, but uh, this is the BK-41. Uh, it's the small version of the BK-40, the very first folder that Ethan Becker designed for K-Bar. Uh, with the beautiful signature uh, clip point blade, which reminds me, I must say, a bit of the clip point blade on the recon, not the recon one, the code four uh, by Cold Steel. I love that very stout clip point blade uh, and the contoured GRN handle. But this time in the BK41, that 3.6 inch blade is now 2.84 inches. And uh, so the whole overall package is smaller. You got that wire clip. Contour GRN again. I think this thing is a very handsome knife. Um, makes it legal in more places, as uh, you know, as as you want from a smaller knife. Um, but if I were to get one, I'd go for the BK40. Uh, but uh, it is an upgrade in blade steel here. At on the smaller model here, you're looking at D2, and on the old one, you're looking at OS8. Either way, uh, we know that K Bar makes a killer knife. Uh, so. Mm, we know that K-Bar makes a great knife. And uh, so, however, whatever steel they use, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be done well. I'm looking forward to this one. And there is no hard release date on this one, uh, but it should be here pretty soon because uh, they've already started talking about it. OK, next up from Poltergeist Works um, out of uh, Poland. Such beautiful knives. Uh, I remember first seeing Poltergeist Works on uh, various uh, custom um, custom knife only purveyors on YouTube, like Arizona custom, not on YouTube, on the internet, like Arizona custom knives and other places. And then uh, started seeing them slowly, uh, uh, Terra Fanatic also used to collect them, but seeing them uh, pop up from uh, production companies has been very exciting. I believe Real Steel and also Best Deck. So Best Deck here teams up with Poltergeist Works, Jacob over there, to come up with this beauty. Uh, this is a four-inch Americanized Tonto with a very uniquely um, uh, compound ground blade. You have that uh, titanium bolster with either that wicked cool uh, swirly carbon fiber that they have there or micarta. Uh, four inches on that blade. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. And uh, something Jared's always talking about, the plunge grind. And, and it looks great here, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like you could sharpen that thing till the cows come home and you're not going to get that smile. What is this thing called? This is called the Best Tech Cetus, which is an unfortunate name. I love the knife and I love Best Tech and I love Poltergeist Design Blade Works. But there is another Cetus that just dropped by Orion Knives. Uh, also a very unique and beautiful knife. This one is a great, great 
uh, user, and I will say self-defense knife, but I people might think I'm crazy for that, but I think so. And it is also called the Cetus. So it's unfortunate that in the same model year, like within a month of each other, two knives have the same name. So hope it doesn't get confusing. I really love the look of this best tech and um, best of luck to everyone involved. All right, next up from a friend and favorite designer or, or one thereof, uh, designer knife maker, Dirk Pinkerton, his new XL folder for CJRB. It is beautiful uh, in a very utilitarian um, way, but also in a sort of, um, well, if I know Dirk, he's always got some ethnographic influence in his designs. And something about this reminds me a little bit of the Russian Yakut. We have not discussed this, so I'm not sure if that's, if that's the case, but um, I did have a chance to fondle and uh, hold on to this knife for a short while, the one with the black blade and red handle. Um, at Blade Show uh, because uh, I spent some time with Dirk and he had that with him and he asked my opinion. So I held on to it for a short while and opened and closed it and enjoyed its 4.25 inch AR RPM 9 blade. I'm very excited about the size. Uh, this is, but it's not a big menacing weapon. I mean, it could be, you could use it and have it be menacing, but it doesn't have a design that screams like, combat or tactical it's like a big utility knife and man it feels great in hand I, this is just all my personal experience uh with the prototype feels great in hand and and that big blade uh opens like you just nudge the thumb stud and it flies open and then it's a fall shut it's a just a awesome thing and i love the fuller by the way fuller is awesome so check this out. What's it called, Bob? Uh, this is called the uh, Resource. And uh, when is it coming out? Um, not sure, uh, but it will be coming out shortly. I know that. Uh, I know that just by the by. So look forward to that. All right. Lastly, in Knife Life news, another great house of knives, atelier of knives is Spartan Blades. I absolutely love Spartan and almost everything they do. And the stuff that I'm not fond of, it's not my taste, but it's still amazing. And I do know that. Uh, so here's one that is my taste and it's also in my price range. Uh, this is the Poros. And this one is a folder designed by Curtis Iovito himself, uh, co-founder of Spartan Blades. This one has a nice long slender and i'm calling it tactical uh drop point blade um but if you if you can if you can see in this picture here that's up on screen if you look from the um look from the filler tab on the on the pommel uh, where the pocket clip should be uh, and then you look up to the pivot and then back down to the point you will see that the point though it looks center line is below center line so this is going to be great for utility use. This is going to be great for those pull cuts and draw cuts and all the stuff that you like a Warncliffe for. How, however, it's got a different blade shape. And that and that blade shape is uh, this long slender draw point is slightly canted downward. Um, and we know that that accelerates a cut. So you get the belly here. You get the benefit of a belly, but you also have the benefit of a downward canted blade. So you get you get uh, material pulled into the cut. This, I think it's beautiful too. All of that, all of that mumbo jumbo I just said, it's a beautiful, cool looking knife. 3.75 inches of 154 CM, which lets you know this is field, field grade, meaning it's, um, it's not one of their fancy pants knives that you have to save up for. It's going to be less expensive and it's going to be one that you can take out into the field without worry. Uh, wait, all of them are, are field capable, of course, but not all of us want to uh, take our knives out and bang around with our $400 knives. That's what I'm getting at. G10 or carbon fiber G10 laminate. I don't know why they bother with that. It should be G10 or micarta. No one likes the carbon fiber G10 laminate. Sorry, it's just true. Uh, and 5.2 ounces. Uh, it is available now, which leads me to believe that when I recover from the bills that are coming due from Blade Show. I am all over this. It looks like a great, 
daily carry. All right, that does it for Knife Life News. Also, while we're here, just don't forget to head over to uh, Knife Rights and join in on um, the ultimate steal because it's good for all of us. Uh, that's their their annual fundraiser. And uh, man, uh, Philly, Philly, good things happening there. So uh, thanks to Knife Rights. Uh, okay, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some new knives coming across my desk. A couple of them are mine. A couple of them are loners. And then the most carried knives of June 2023. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this little beauty here is actually kind of a large beauty. This is the Artisan Accelerator. And this one is mine. I bought this recently. I got it off of Amazon. And the story here is, pardon me, the story here is Artisan reached out to me. Uh, they've uh, given me a couple of knives in the past for review, and then we've given them away and and uh, and the like. But uh, they, they wanted to know if I wanted to check out the Accelerator. I was like, the Accelerator by Mike Snowdy, who's, who's kind of an old school tactical knife, custom knife maker. Uh, kind of an interesting dude. He was down in Florida. I'm not sure where he is now. Tried to get him on the show once. Um, but anyway, he, very interesting guy, interesting designs. And, uh, oh man, I jumped at the chance. And then that trail went cold. Um, and they never, you know, I sent him my address. Yeah, send it my way, whichever one. I don't care what dress, you know, what colorway. And uh, anyway, they forgot or or whatever, you know, I, you can't, can't always... Uh, get too excited about that stuff but i was so excited that i ended up buying it myself because i think it's just rad and yes i said rad that is a nearly four inch blade that's ar rpm 9 the um proprietary steel uh, from artisan cutlery look at that incredible drop point blade with the harpoon uh both utilitarian and menacing and biological or i should say it not biological zoological at the same time it looks like some sort of a creature animal dinosaur i'm not sure what but uh with that lozenge shaped hole opening hole or comet shaped hole it just it looks incredible i have to say the looks are there but also utility wise that's there too because that harpoon which i normally harp on not crazy about harpoons but i like the way this one looks and also when when used with this supplementary guard slash forward shelf and thumb in the in the swale or in the harpoon there you get a lot of real estate there you get a lot of cutting there um a lot of uh cutting edge and a lot of um what am i trying to say here hand room so this this knife offers you a lot of different grips i could have said that and spared you the last 30 seconds um you can choke down here and get a little bit of chop you know kind of a la cold steel with the, with the different grips they have you can be here, you can be up here, and you can also use your finger, like uh, put your forefinger in that harpoon and use this as a as a as a nice draw cutting knife. So uh, using that belly, that is. So just a really great knife. I love the way it looks. Again, and it's large. It's in my in my uh, wheelhouse in terms of size, and it's got a great sculpted clip here, titanium clip with the let's see let me back off there there you see that dollar sign that's always been mike snowdy's logo there if you don't know mike snowdy s-n-o-d-y do an image search and uh check out some of his very cool uh work um very nice drop shut action on this i thought for a while i think for a while he was out of knives um and then and, and doing other cool products and then came back to knives um, but anyway, there you go. Uh, that's the Artisan Accelerator. I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, next up, the Best Tech Skirmish. Now, the Skirmish, these Best Tech knives were sent to me from Best Tech to check out. Oh, cool. Um, well, they came to me via Tri-State. They've been going around. And uh, thank you, 
Cole. Appreciate it. Uh, but these are the two here. Um, uh, a field grade version, if you will, and then a dressed up version. Uh, let me start with the dressed up version. You've got the uh, uh, 9CR, um, what do you call it? 9CR stainless um, damascene blade steel. And then you have this cool swirly cellular looking biological, again, that word popped up, uh, looking white G10. Very cool uh, liner lock here. You got a sort of off the shelf clip, but that blade shape is just wicked, isn't it? I mean, to me, that looks like Demon Barber of Fleet Street. That's like straight out of Sweeney Todd. It's like, let me give you, let me give you a shave here. And then you have the uh, proprietary pivot, keeping words off of the blade which I like. You have an excellent opening hole for reverse uh, flicking and such. But when you get to the handle, that's where that's where you lose me a little bit. Here, I'm going to put this down and I'll continue this conversation on the field grade version, which I like better uh, because you can really see the grinds on that beautiful blade. Here, let me um, do a little ADD wiping down and then bring it up close. And if you indeed are ADD, I am not in any way be smirching you. Uh, so you can see the grind lines there. And then you can also see the bevels. And it's beautiful. This is D2. And I like it better than the Damascus, Damascus blade. And then you've got G10. It's kind of a handsome combination there with that, uh, with the black and green. I like all that. Uh, and this one, they couldn't resist uh, putting their logo on the blade. Uh, don't don't like that. <clears throat> but it's not a, not a deal breaker. What kind of is for me. And the reason I wouldn't buy this knife is the ergonomics. Your hand is either here, in which case your pinky's kind of hanging off the end and you're, you're an inch and a half from the cutting edge, or you're up here. And this seems at best a secondary consideration, this, this landing area for the um, forefinger. So really what this knife needs it already has a great opening hole that you can reverse flick and you can thumb flick and you can slow roll, et cetera, et cetera. What it needs is to not be a flipper. Get rid of the flipper. And if you get rid of that flipper, you won't need all of this forward guard to accommodate and hide the flipper. And you could actually have this be usable space and have this whole grip be something that you want to grip. And you'd have extra room at the end. Um, but right now, I think to have it be a flipper and to have it have numerous ways of opening, which, you know, it's starting to get out of hand, people. No, I'm sorry. That's my curmudgeonly side. But in this case, it is. In this case, it does not need the flipper. In this case, it would benefit from a flipper delete and total re-sculpting of this forward uh, portion. Because there is a lot of real estate. It's just not usable. It's swamp land, if you will. All right, but that's the skirmish, a really cool blade in a in a not so favorite handle. But thank you for sending it my way. This could definitely be someone's someone's cup of tea. Uh, I'll tell you what best tech is my cup of tea. That's this. I was trying to be cool and it didn't work. Uh, this next one uh, designed. This is a cones craft design from Canada. He makes incredible fixed blade knives. Our good friend Dave, this old sword blade reviews has a number of his custom knives. Go check those out on his channel. Uh, but this is his one, one of Mr. Cohen's, um, Cohen's, sorry, one of Mr. Cohen's, um, uh, folding designs. Sorry. I cannot open this one with my left hand. Certainly not on camera. It's called the keen two and it is fantabulous. It is gorgeous. I love this thing. It is. It, I need one. When they come out, I need one of these because it is a four inch plus. That's like four and a quarter. I, I'm liking this trend towards large knives. Four and a quarter inch uh, S30. Yeah, S35 VN blade clip point um, uh, at, at least an inch of a flat grind. Very slicey, very sharp. Um, keen behind, you know, thin behind the edge. This one actually needs a little touch up. Uh, I might strop it a little, even though it's not mine, just, just like two or three times just, just to see how it, how it responds. Uh, but, oh man, this handle is just awesome. It's contoured from top to bottom. It's very thin. 
very light and beautiful pocket clip. Everything about this, this I was afraid of the way the uh, pocket uh, for the um, lock bar is right under the clip. Um, really, why don't we just put the pockets on the inside every time? There's this concern that it's slightly more strong having it in the center. I mean, come on, let's let's be real. None of a, none of us are really need that much, you know, that minimal amount of more strength, uh, if you know what I mean. It's just to have, uh, just put the pocket on the inside, people. Said the guy who never made a knife in his life uh, folder. Uh, but right here, it's it's perfectly set up for reverse grip. I love that, the way the thumb lands there and hooks over the bottom. Um, just a great, great knife. And also this um, this fuller works, whoops, works for uh, a reverse flick. So just a great knife. Very excited about this Keen 2. I looked it up on Blade HQ. I wasn't sure if it was out yet or not. It's not out yet. And I think it's going to be expensive, but might be one worth saving your shekels for. All right, last up in State of the Collection, let me show you this sent to me from Rick Valdez, uh, gentleman and scholar of Ocaso Knives. Ocaso Knives. This beautiful, first before I open it, look at this. This is leather, and uh, the word that keeps coming to mind is sumptuous. It's like soft and supple, and it's got this red stitching. It's just beautiful. Little clasp here. Uh, with um, a magnet and what it opens and reveal. When I open it, I reveal four Ocaso Solstice Knives. Uh, this is the first release of the new Ocaso Knives Company. And if you didn't listen to um, the podcast interview with Rick Valdez, you have to. It's excellent. Um, he's a very interesting and and uh, um, charismatic guy. And uh, he spent 20 years working at Cold Steel. And when the GSM sale went through, he left Cold Steel and started his own company uh, based on his own tastes and his own lifestyle. And he is a, a guy that has great style. I met him in person at Blade Show and uh, he's just a dapper Dan, man. What can I say? He's a he's a he's a dapper dude and he and he appreciates style and it comes through in his knives. These are gentlemen's knives. And the first one is designed by Andrew Demko. He has other designers lined up making others like Mike Wallace and um, and uh, oh my gosh well watch the interview <laughs> uh, but this is the first one and man uh, it is a gentleman's knife it is a gentleman's knife but at 3.6 what is that that's more like that's 3.75 inches on the blade long and slender and titanium uh, this thing is robust. So it's a gentleman's knife, long and slender. It has all of those characteristics, easy to carry, relatively light, and gorgeous to look at. Look at that. You've got the the pivot is their logo. logo. Ocaso Knives, Solstice, S35VN, um, liner lock. Um, it has everything you want uh, in a gentleman's knife, plus robustness. That's not a, an adjective that comes up often when we talk about um, when we talk about uh, gentlemen's knives, robust. Here is another one. This, these are four different dresses for the solstice. This is black anodized with black um, handle. That black anodizing looks pretty bronze to me. So maybe uh, maybe I'm talking out of school. This might be called bronze. I got to look it up. Haven't done the review on this yet. Uh, just, I mean. It speaks for itself. It's beautiful. It's sleek. It is stout. It's got a nice weight to it um, in the titanium. The carbon fiber is much lighter. Uh, and as you see, they have this cool uh, ambidextrous pocket clip that locks into a pocket on the opposite side. Um, as you can see, if or uh, maybe you can't see, maybe you're just listening, but under the pocket clip, they have these little disc protectors. This is brand new to me. I have not even carried these knives yet, but I really look forward to it. And uh, I'll be carrying all of them uh, to check them out. Uh, there is that. And then here it is in carbon fiber. And man, yeah, these are much lighter. Carbon fiber uh, satin, carbon fiber black, satin, and black. Look at that package. Thank you to Ocaso Knives. Uh, thank you, Rick Valdez. This is awesome. I, I'm going to 
I'm going to carry these knives and check them out and really, uh, really live with them. And I, I, they're, they're, they're touching a number of different parts of me. And, and I love knowing that Demco designed them. They're built rock solid. They're like tanks, but they're also graceful, gentlemanly, handsome tanks. And that's what I want to be. Graceful, handsome, gentlemanly tank. I'm not much of a tank, but you know what I mean? I want to be a force to be reckoned with. But I also want to, you know, look like James Bond doing it. That's the ideal anyway for for me. Maybe I've revealed too much. All right. I'm going to set these aside. And who knows? They're so thin and light. They might uh, they might join this next list, um, but more towards the end of the summer. We shall see this list. What I want to talk about is June and my carry this June. These are the most carried knives of June 2023. And it's different because. I've been carrying smaller knives in the front right pocket position, and I've felt the confidence to do so because my fixed blade game is so strong and regular, uh, consistent. So um, knowing that I have a fixed blade on me, I don't know, liberates me from feeling like I have to have a large knife. Now, that is my taste, a large folder, but my taste is also for some of these smaller ones. So I want to show them off. Also uh, notable is that the month started off with Blade Show, so a lot of what I carried was new uh, because I honeymoon phase and excited. Okay, first up, from Jack Wolf Knives, the absolutely stunning Gunslinger. Uh, Gunslinger Jack here in the beautiful carbon fiber, that blue Arctic storm carbon fiber. Um just a side note here, uh, I'm thinking you could start doing a drinking game and uh, take a shot every time I say beautiful. You would not make it long on this show. I do realize I repeat myself, but uh, what can I say? I'm enamored with this knife. There, there's a new word. Enamored with this knife. Um, ben Belkin took all of his knowledge in, in creating some of the greatest slip joints in the last many, many, many years. And, uh, and then just sort of learned how to make a bolster lock and designed a damn awesome bolster lock. Um, I have one micro gripe if I had to, and that would be the access to the lock bar. Uh, only because, uh, only because I feel like all I do is rain praise on these and it's hard not to because they're perfection. So this one is, uh, uh, 3.25 inches in a uh, blade length. That's S 90 V blade steel about 10 knives in they switched to s90 v from m390 uh, which is cool that's a that's an american steel that's a cool change too um blasted titanium bolsters you got that triple threaded threaded bolster up front so all of these hallmarks of a traditional knife that traditional knife geeks uh geek out about even giving it a full backspacer to look like a slip joint also matching the anodization on the clip. So one uh, reason this thing got a lot of pocket time, besides just being addictive in terms of the fidget factor, uh, lots of ways to open this guy, uh, but because it's light and it's got a pocket clip, you know, a lot of the Jack Wolf, none of the other Jack Wolf knives have pocket clips. And sometimes I don't feel like having something in my pocket, especially in the summertime. And it's been getting hot, but this Jack Wolf knife has been making it into my front right pocket a lot uh let me just drop it shut here and give it another flick you can you can do that you can do that you can do flick you can slow roll it with your thumb this knife is awesome okay next i mentioned the cetus earlier and here it is uh this was a gift from david cam of orion knives i'm very grateful thank you sir because this thing is awesome it's a great edc you can tell from that hump back it's got an overall arc taking that very very straight cutting edge and putting it a downward cant putting that tip down low and making this a great utility knife a great utility cutter point driven but also say you're cutting straps pulling towards you or or cutting rope pulling towards you um i also say this is a great self-defense knife uh, because it is a wicked wicked slasher because of that downward canted blade to me it reminds me of the southern filipino sword the ganunting that is a hawk build sword one i've shown off many times on this show and to me this is like having that in the pocket steel frame lock 
14 c 28 and sorry left hand deployment this uh, fuller is great for middle finger flicking better better than the whole opening hole though you can bury your fat of your uh, finger in that opening hole and it'll fly open i opted for the black with this beautiful amboya wood i love the way that looks cetus by orion knives that is available now go check it out okay so i was uh, waxing poetic about my love of pinkerton knives earlier and uh well, this has been getting a lot of waistband time this summer because it's such a thin, light package. But damn, is it menacing and capable uh, if need be. And that is the triple-edged fire ant, a worn cliff or sheep's foot or, dare I say, reverse tanto with a triple edge. You got an edge right up here, an edge here, and an edge here. They're all wickedly sharp. And they're at the end of bevels that are perfectly hand ground. Dirk Pinkerton is a master at hand grinding and uh, he makes a lot, you know, he, he's responsible for a lot of designs in the production world. We have many of them, but he also is responsible for these really, really nicely made handmade knives. I have three of them and I want that to be more and that will be more because I will get more. Uh, but again, you've got a downward canting to the blade and uh, knowing Dirk, uh, he does, he puts a lot of thought into self-defense as well as utility. Uh, this is the only triple edge I saw at blade show. He, he had a number of fire ants uh, with just the primary edge sharp. And that would make a great, great, EDC, you know, I'm me and I like triple edged or double edged, you know, however many edges I can get. Uh, so I opted for this one. Uh, but if you like the design, but not so into the, the triple edge, uh, he makes these all of them like most of them without that triple edge setup. So a great utility EDC and very easy to carry. I carry mine appendix. And again, I have that uh, I have that rubberized inner tube there to stop it from changing angles, especially if I have a uh, thin pants material that, that this discrete carry clip is, is attached to. Next up from our friends at Devo Knives, that's Lefty, uh, that's Kevin um, Johnson and Colin Maison-Pierre of CM Designs. They came together and produced Devo Knives. They have a number of knives out there, but this is probably my favorite. This is the Growler. You saw this earlier on this channel um, months ago when it was a prototype and was doing the rounds. And uh, I bought this one at Blade Show. And I just love it. I love it. The The blade is about 3.6 three inches of 14C28. And, and to me, I used to call it a clip point. It's like, this is a Bowie and you don't even know it. But I was wrong. It's not. It's a Hudson Bay knife. And you don't even know it. Hudson Bay knife, like the uh, the famed Trappers knives used by the Hudson Bay Company and Trappers uh, in Canada, uh, you know, in the um, 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, that's what this reminds me of. Beautiful blade. I like the way it is stepped down from the handle. It really gives your your hand and your knuckles a lot of clearance when cutting. What's the clearance, Clarence? And uh, when you come up onto this little choil area, this is very comfortable, un unlike that uh, little area of the uh, of that best tech we were talking about. Uh, nice carbon, or not carbon fiber, uh, micarta stained right there. When I went out to lunch, I was playing hooky one day not too long ago and went out to lunch with my wife. She took a break from work. I sat this down on the table after cutting some pork. That stain stay there. I will always remember that romantic afternoon from that pork stain right there on that micarta. Uh, that is the Devo Growler, a great knife. All of their knives are themed after drinking. No, after beer. Uh, like a growler is a jar jug thing that you bring back to the brewery and have your, uh, you know, get, get refilled. So they also have a lot of other very cool knives out there. Okay, next is from American Blade Works, one man band, Michael Miller. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael Martin. Um, and uh, great dude. I have his American Blade Works Model 1 version 5 that I've shown off many a time. Well, I got this one at Blade Show as a loner and uh, it turned into mine 
when I offered to buy it and he insisted I keep it. This is the Model 2. And to me, it's a beautiful design. It reminds me of something from the 30s, uh, Art Deco, like an Airstream or a, a, a like an old car or, or something. Uh, the Chrysler building. Um, it even looks good closed. It is a thing of beauty. Uh, one man band, like I said, titanium liner lock. He's really, uh, really taught himself well how to make knives. This is my one and only so far Magna Cut blade. And um, just anecdotally, probably the sharpest folder in my collection. It seems like it. Uh, I've used it uh, quite a bit since I've gotten it. And uh, even before it was mine. And it just, man, it's like a laser beam uh, slipping between the molecules. So he he did very, very, very well on the geometry of this blade and on the sharpening of this blade, but also on the hardening of this blade at 63 to 64. That's how Magna has to be uh, hardened. That is the uh, range it's supposed to be hardened at. And um, I know a lot of people so far have been squeamish about that. And I guess that's understandable in a way, but um, not Michael Martin and American Blade Works. This thing is awesome. Go check them out. Uh, by the way, I, I'm going to have a Model 1 Warncliffe coming to me because after he so generously gave this to me, I figured I I had to buy something from him to, you know, one good turn deserves another A and B. Um, I really like the look of the Warncliffe blade he's now putting on the Model 1. And I, I feel like I need to have it. <laughs> it is kind of aggressive, which, which I like. All right, next up, uh, again, another fixed blade knife, uh, getting a lot of carry this summer since I got it at Blade Show from uh, Michael Jarvis and Auxiliary Manufacturing out of Reno, Nevada. Check out my interview with Michael Jarvis. Um, really uh, great guy, former chef. He makes incredible chef's knives, by the way. But most of what he makes are EDC leaning towards EDC self-defense, uh, but they certainly don't have to be that way. Uh, but this certainly is. This is the Pocket Rocket 3-inch dagger in a great sheath, by the way. And I just want to show it in the sheath for a second because this is great appendix carry because of a small amount of it. It's a small blade, so a small amount of it is uh, down there poking you south of the border. So this is a, a really comfortable carry. And then when you draw it, it is a very effective carry. A, a really, really sharp and super pointy dagger blade, three inches here with a medial uh, ridge here that comes to the about a third down the blade. So very stout, but also very, very pointy. Not so stout that it's not a good cutter though. Um, so I feel like this could go through pretty much with, with the appropriate amount of force. You could really get this into a lot of, uh, a lot of things you're trying to get it into. And with a beautifully faceted handle, faceted and sculpted um, and swaled handle here, it just locks in. It's octagonal in cross section and really locks in whether it's, uh, edge oriented forward or edges oriented sideways. Um, say you grab it like this, it's still locked in. And then if you want to use it in forward grip in this sort of spade or shovel grip, that's what I call it. Cause it reminds me of a shovel hook, uh, punch it, it locks in same thing in regular saber grip orientation. And it's because of all of these finger grooves and that angle. Sometimes angle is better than contour. Sometimes contour feels, you know, so nice, but uh, sometimes you want something angular so that it's not going to turn in your hand and so that it gives you something hard, like an angle to brace against. And I think uh, Michael Jarvis and auxiliary manufacturing has really uh, nailed it with this handle, this pocket rocket handle. It comes with uh, a Pical blade you can get, and you can also get it in different uh, shape, uh, different size daggers. Uh, so, yep, check it out. Auxiliary Manufacturing out of Reno, Nevada. Um, and this is a great way to get into custom knives, by the way, is, um, is going for uh, new-ish makers 
um, doing fixed blade knives and you can really get some, some great stuff. It's like when I was in art school, I always thought that, uh, people who were just out of art school and were, were starving to, or, you know, uh, struggling to survive either quit making art or made the most intense artwork of their lives, uh, because they're, you know, they're burning with passion. And also like, this is the option I've left myself. And I'm not speaking about auxiliary manufacturing. I'm just speaking about, um, new ish knife makers who are not established by years and years and years and decades of, you know, you can get some very interesting work for, um, you know, less, I guess, than, than in the folder realm. All right. Next up, speaking of the folder realm, uh, and very uncustom, the Civivi Cinesis. I've been carrying this one a lot. I got this, uh, several months ago. Um, and, what draw me to it was that nice big clip point blade. It reminds me a little bit of the Waxahashi fixed blade that I have, Waxahachi, and uh, that's by Senkut, but same family. You know, this is Civivi. You can tell by the branded pivot, and that's the only writing on there, which I really like. 14C28N, you've got your burlap micarta slab there, no line. Oh, I'm mistaken. There is a liner in there, but you can see it right there. But it feels very light for a steel frame lock. That's why I thought it was linerless for a second there. But I like the way they did the three cutouts there. And uh, nice and thin. That makes this steel frame lock light and easy to carry. It is big. It's a 3.8 inch blade. And that blade is blasted. But that doesn't bother me. I know a lot. Oh, shit. I know a lot of people don't uh, like blasted blades. Sorry, I thought I cut myself there. I did, but it didn't break all the way to the skin a uh, full belly there going from full finger choil to tip and you get a little bit of that belly pointing downward so you can trap some material in the cut right there um, i know with trailing points and and such uh, people don't want to lose the cut and, and i understand that here you got the point right at the center line though look at the look at the uh the pocket clip holes here for the left side to the c to the tip and you'll see that that tip is low slung even with that belly so you can get your drag cuts and all that pull cuts done easily excellent action and fun to use uh is this civivi cinesis drop shutty great jimping all right next up this one from our good friend kc at tempest knives and knives fast uh, the Knives Fast channel here on YouTube. Uh, he's he's been knocking it out with these uh, with his designs. He's got one coming that I am swooning for. I'm looking forward to that one so much. But this one stole my heart and unexpectedly. Uh, again, I had the prototype of this one about a year ago or so, and man, I fell in love with it immediately. I got to say, when I saw the looks of it, I was like, oh, eh, you know, not as aggressive as I like, but. Blah, 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 blah. And then I got it, and like I said, fell in love with it. You got this grip right up here. This is a utility beast, by the way. Got this grip here. You got this grip here. You've got micarta contoured very nicely with the wired clip that accepts the uh, lynch clip version of the wire clip. And you've got awesome action. 14C28N, tall um, sheep's foot, nice belly up towards the front. Uh, sort of a, you know, so you get the the use of that tip for all these kind of utility cuts, but you also get a more forgiving uh, blade profile there for rocking cuts. And, you know, sometimes uh, a straight worn cliff with a super straight blade, um, you know, is not so good for a certain kind of cutting, um, anything where you need to rock at all. Uh, so this, this is a very accommodating design and a little charmer to me. And it's got the proprietary pivot that looks like a racing car wheel there tempest knives check them out i know that these uh i bought this from kc at blade show and i know that these are uh these are on sale now and you can get other um replacement scales for it too uh with different milling with a different milling pattern or with a milling pattern okay penultimate knife in this list is one that i i carry a lot and it's an unexpected knife, uh, one that I wasn't going to get myself and so glad it was given to me. Thank you very much, Tim Kell by Tim Kell Knives. When I ordered the combatant, one that I was really psyched about getting, I thought I was going to carry it all the time. 
I like it. I don't carry it as much as I thought I would. But the one that he dropped in the box, in addition, this one here, the Night Stalker, I carry all the time. Now, by the way, it does not automatically ship with this discrete carry slash Tim uh, T. Kale knives clip, uh, but I but you buy it. It's a secondary thing, and it's awesome. It's worth the eleven bucks. T. Kale knives Night Stalker just fits on the belt perfectly. It's so low profile. It it doesn't print under a t-shirt. Um, that's why I carry it so much. It it just is so low profile. But then you draw it, and it draws really well. Um, I keep it so that my right hand draws it in this grip. And by the way, that ring is perfectly positioned and designed to get a full fist, a full tight fist without, without putting your knuckles in wacky alignment like many ring knives do. Um, but then it also has an attitude adjuster here. And, uh, and then for left, I can draw it just like this. And, uh, you know, I rarely use that ring in left, you know, uh, in forward grip. I like the ring as an extra wide pommel really locks you in. That's how I like ring knives in forward grip. This is the AEBL, uh, one of the first stainless offerings by T. Kell Knives. And it's got that slick nickel boron coating that not only uh, makes it, it's not only like a solid lubricant making the knife slicker, uh, borrowed from the gun world, but it also adds a Rockwell hardness, I believe. Um, if maybe, uh, maybe one or two, I can't remember, but again, uh, a, a great interview with Tim Kell, he reveals that. Uh, you got the forward jimping and uh, replaceable scales. That's what's so cool. There's so many different scales uh, that you can get from them, uh, from cheerful, bright, um, uh, G10 for a little bit of cognitive dissonance to these uh, sort of swirly camo style G10s that I'm very, very fond of. Love this TKL knife. It, it carries like a dream uh, in cross draw or, you know, straight front scout, whatever you want to call it, right at the belt line horizontally. And now uh, last one, this might not be a surprise to you, but I carry this all the time because it carries so well. That's why I co-designed this version of it. This is the uh, Knife Junkie slash Hogtooth Knives Nova 1. And this is based on the EDC Tonto by Hogtooth Knives that has the very same length and the very same handle. All, all I did was design the blade and, uh, and organize a, a building of this knife. And, uh, and so there are 25 of these that are being made right now for a late August delivery, I believe. I'm saying late August to hedge my bets, but uh, things are going well. He's been sending me pictures um, and uh, it's hollow ground, you know, recurve Bowie. Uh, that recurve is meant to be sharpened out over the years so that you maintain that Bowie shape. Um, but what makes this so comfortable in appendix is that like the auxiliary manufacturing, it's not too long. So it doesn't pokey poke when you sit down. And uh, if you need to reposition it, you just, you just, angle it and then the rubber that i put there uh holds it but uh you got the discrete carry concept clip and then that overall shape is is just perfect that length is just perfect and then this right here the pommel of this really nice polished micarta handle that pommel just mm, it melts into my my belly <laughs> you know uh it it's very comfortable in you know pressed into the flesh uh, i don't know how else to put it but you know if this is riding right against my body under a t-shirt it's i forget it's there it's so comfortable and then uh when it's on top of a t-shirt same thing um now mind you it's oriented this way in my belt this is the appendix and then the curve of my uh the side curve you know my my belly's right here but you know it kind of comes out a little bit and this feels really good it just melts into the belly that's all i'm trying to say so that's what i had uh this is what i've been carrying uh most fixed blade wise that was difficult to finish but uh let me just tell you this knife is exciting and so are all these others and i'm, I'm really happy that i'm opening myself up a little bit to not being so rigid rigidly in my wheelhouse it's got to be a 3.5 to 4 inch blade for me to carry it in the front right or alternatively it doesn't 
All right. Well, thank you for joining me on this most carried knives of June 2023 listing. Uh, it was great to have you here with me and yelling uh, at the screen, telling me what you've been carrying. Please leave those comments down below. Greatly appreciated. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. And uh, if you're if, if you're listening on the day this is released, tomorrow night is June 6th, 2023. We are going to be giving away this very patriotic O-Knife O-Light package to one lucky winner who can type hashtag knife in the comments. Also, be sure to check us out on Patreon. You can go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code on your screen. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.